Hi, welcome to educators.com. I'm Shavanti, your Hadoop development instructor. In this module, we are going to discuss about introduction to the HDFS, Hadoop distributed file system, and what is the need of the HDFS over the local file system, HDFS architecture, purpose of your name node and secondary name node and why data nodes are required and finally what are these heartbeat signals introduction to HDFS HDFS is a, it is a primary storage system we call it as a Hadoop distributed file system in the entire Hadoop cluster this is the place where you will be storing all your big data files so it is a small file or big file irrespective of the size of the file all your files get stored as part of your Hadoop distributed file system so whatever is storing as part of your HDFS it gets divided into the small chunks called blocks and each block is going to be stored as part of your HDFS. And this HDFS is highly fault tolerant. That means in case of one of your machine goes down, still you will not be losing even a single byte of the data. You will be seeing in the next few slides how this fault tolerance can be achieved with the help of your HDFS. So what is the purpose of your Hadoop distributed file system when we are having the local file system with us? So in terms of your Windows, if I say the local file system, it will be Windows NTFS or so. If it is a Linux, you can see that ext 4 is a local file system. But what is the purpose of this HDFS when we already have this local file system is nothing but your local file systems cannot be interact with each other. They work independently. In case one of the thing goes down, one of your local file system machine is going down, the another machine does not even have that information. That means there is a chance of losing your data. So to avoid such kind of the things, to make sure that to give you the highly fault tolerant system, we are having another layer as part of your local file system. That layer we call it as Hadoop distributed file system. This HDFS is not a physical thing because whatever you are storing as part of your HDFS is also internally going to be stored in your local file system itself. But the thing is, once you navigate to your uh, file system structure, you cannot see that your HDFS files as part of your local file system. To access the files which are stored as part of your HDFS, you must need to use your HDFS commands or, or else there is something called a UI is also available. Either of these two things you can access your HDFS. Otherwise, you cannot even access your Hadoop distributed files from your local file system. If you see the architecture of your Hadoop distributed file system, it's a master-slave architecture. That means your master is your name node. We call it as a name node. And the slave machines, whatever you are seeing, we call them as the data nodes. So here, and apart from this name nodes and the data nodes, we are also having something called a secondary name node or checkpoint name node, we call it as. We will be seeing in detail about what is the purpose of the secondary name nodes and what is the need of your data nodes and name nodes. So if you observe this diagram, 
let's assume a 300 mb of the file is there that 300 mb of the file wants to store as part of your hadoop distributed file system so it is going to be divided into the blocks whatever you want to store it will be dividing into the blocks by default the block size is 128 can be in your latest hadoop so your 300 mb of the size file is going to be divided into the three blocks if you observe this there is a yellow color block and the green block and the violet block so your blocks are going to be stored in three machines the same block if you observe the yellow block is stored in the data node 2 data node 3 and the data node 4 as well what is the reason why it is storing as part of the three different machines is nothing but your in case one of the machine goes down due to any other issues still your data has to be accessible in the rest of the machine that is what we call it as a fault tolerance that is the reason why because of there is something called a replication factor in your hadoop by default replication factor is 3 so all your blocks are going to be stored three times in your cluster cluster is nothing but a collection of machines you might be having a question can i change this replication factor yes of course you can change it there is a parameter called dfs dot replication in your hdfs site dot xml files anyway going forward i'll be letting you know that where is that file and what are the parameters to change your replication factor and also to change your block size all of these things in the coming modules we will be discussing in detail so here you can see that there are multiple slaves are available but there is only a single master which is a name node so let's try to understand what exactly this name node does as we mentioned that this is a single point of contact if anybody wants to contact your hadoop cluster the first and foremost point of contact is your name node even if you wanted to add any of the file to your hdfs and delete a file move a file copy a file any such kind of the activity it first interacts with your name node and name node will take a decision where you wanted to store your files or else where you wanted to retrieve your files because your name node maintains some very very important file called metadata information and this consisting of all the block locations and also what are all the blocks available and where exactly it's stored all of this information is stored as part of your name node metadata and here your name node is responsible for your block replications and your load balancing and all of these things so as we mentioned that we are having a very important thing called a name node metadata as part of your name node machine so when i say this metadata it consisting of two things one is the edit logs another one is the fs image so the combination of these edit logs and fs image we call it as a metadata so what is edit logs edit logs are nothing but whatever the changes you are doing to your hdfs probably a placing a file or changing some attributes of your hdfs file any such kind of the activity will be logged into your edit logs so we call this as a transactional log all the sequence of changes to your hdfs will be noted down into your edit logs and what about fs image this fs image is a snapshot of the file system snapshot is nothing but let's assume if you are having your c drive once you open your c drive what are all the things you can see like i can see some folders inside the folders i have some subfolders inside the subfolders i am having some files so exactly 
at current point of time, what you can see once you open your file system is what we call it as a snapshot of the file system. So always your name node metadata information is stored as part of your edit logs and the FS image file. And here for the faster access, these metadata information always stores as part of your RAM. That is in the main memory, it, it will be stored. So that it will be faster because you need not do a uh, disk reads and writes. It avoids that when it is in the RAM, you can access it very faster. And we also have something called a secondary name node. So what is the purpose of the secondary name node when I have the name node already in place? That is nothing but here when I say the edit logs, if you are working, a lot of users are placing these files and you're doing n number of the changes, there is a chance that your edit logs are keep on growing. It increases. So once it increases, there is a chance that it might reach your main memory. And also, whenever you restart your name node, your edit logs are going to be merged with your FS image. So in case of the huge amount of the edit logs you have, there is a chance that your restarts also takes a lot of time. So to avoid all such kind of the problems, we do have something called a secondary name node. What the secondary name node does is it queries for this edit logs in your name node on a periodical basis. That is, by default, it is one hour is the checkpoint period. Even you can change that one hour period as well if you want. So simply, hourly basis, your secondary name node will talk to your name node and it will take all of the edit logs from your name node to the secondary name node. And whatever the merging we are talking about, like merging your edit log information with your FS image, that merging will be taken care by your secondary name node over here. Once you get the final updated FS image, this FS image is pushed back to your name node. And also, till now, whatever the edit logs are there, the previous edit logs get cleaned up because the merging is already done with the edit logs. So that is the reason why once after you receive this particular FS image, your previous edit logs get cleaned up. So that is what we call this mechanism as a checkpoint mechanism. So this is the purpose of your secondary name node to perform this checkpoint mechanism. And it merges your edit logs with the FS image. Yeah, you can see it over here. It is merging it on a regular intervals and also here. And do not think that the secondary name node works as your primary name node whenever your name node goes down. No, it doesn't work in that way. The whole and sole purpose of the secondary name node is to perform the checkpoint mechanism of merging your uh, edit log with your FS image. And we also saw in the architecture diagram, like a lot of data nodes are available. So what is the purpose of these data nodes are nothing but whatever the data is there, whatever the file information is there, your file is dividing into the blocks, that means small chunks. All these blocks are going to be stored as part of your data nodes. So your data nodes are responsible to hold all the information, all the block information, actual block stores over here. And also, data nodes are responsible for the block creations, block divisions, or block replications, all of these activities. And it keeps on receiving the instructions from the name node. And just data node follows the instructions from the name node. So here, whenever I say that data node is storing the actual blocks, that means internally 
those blocks are again going to be stored as part of your local file system itself but you cannot see those things if you directly navigate to your local file system rather you must require to use your hdfs commands or ui to see your hadoop distributed file system blocks what is hadoop hadoop signal is nothing but how your name node understands that this data node is alive or not because in the previous session we understand that all of your slave machines are the commodity hardware machines that means a cheaper hardware machine when i say that cheaper hardware machines there is a chance that the machine can go down so whenever your data node went down how come your name node understood the situation is nothing but with the help of this heartbeat signal every 3 seconds your data node is sending this particular heartbeat signal to your name node saying that hey i am alive and also hey name node i am having this much of the storage capacity in use so that by looking at that particular information your name node can take a decision saying that whether this data node is alive or not and also how much percentage of the space is free as part of this particular data node all this information will be taken care by checking this particular hard disk signal and a point to remember this your name node will never ever directly send the request to the data nodes it is data node responsibility is to talk to your name node and send this hard disk signal only the name node uses this hard disk signal you know to reply back any of the information it uses the previous hard disk signals which were set up from your data node to your name node this is how your data node is going to interact with your name node so in this module we discussed about the hdfs is the primary storage system in the entire hadoop to store your files and whatever you are storing any file is going to be divided into the multiple blocks and also each block is going to be divided into three times because of your replication factor and hdfs is having a master slave architecture that means a master we call it as a name node and the slave machines are a data nodes and your name node consisting of the metadata information that is it consisting of your edit logs and ss image files edit logs consisting of your transactional details like whatever the changes are happening to your entire system and ss image is like snapshot of the file system and we have a secondary name node it does the checkpoint mechanism by connecting to your name node on an hourly basis and whatever the edit logs are there it copies these edit logs to your secondary name node and it performs the merging of your edit logs with your ss image and finally it produces the fresh updated ss image and this fresh updated ss image will be pushed back to your name node when it comes to the data node data node is responsible to store your actual block information and also it sends the hard disk signal to the main node saying that hey i am alive and also this much percentage of my capacity is occupied in this particular data node in the next module we are going to see how we are going to write a file into the hdfs and how we can read a file into the hdfs thank you let's catch up in the next module